every skeleton has adapted to allow each animal to move in particular environments. If you know what to look for, these adaptations can reveal surprising stories. And there's no better example than with my mole. Dr. Nick Crumpton, a mammal expert from Cambridge University, has brought a different mole, native to South Africa, for comparison with my European version. This is one of my favorite animals. This is a golden mole. Yeah. So it's quite similar to the European mole. Mm -hmm because they both live in very similar environments. Looking at their skeletons, we can kind of see that they have a skeleton adapted to a life under the ground. So they're quite small. They have almost like a tubular shaped body. They've got much, much larger forelimbs than hind limbs, exactly the same as your mole right here. Yep. And they also have these huge elongated scapulae, like the shoulder blades. Initially, they seem similar, but a closer look reveals that each one has evolved very differently. On your mole, you have that really strange-shaped humerus. Yep. But on golden moles, it's still it's quite, quite strange. Quite advanced, isn't it? Yeah. But, but it looks not as radically peculiar as you find yeah. in European moles. Instead, we find the ulna, one of these bones in our forearms yep. here, that actually extends a lot further back. It does, now, it? that part there, that's called the olecranon process. Right. Now, we have those as well. That's just like... It's pretty much at elbow. The, end, the elbow, isn't it? Yeah. The muscle attaches to that electronon process. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a sort of bar coming out the bottom of your arm and you pull on that with a muscle, that's going to whip your arm down really fast and really powerfully. Yeah. And that's fascinating because that's a completely different way of digging to your European moles. It's these variations in the bones between the two species that helped scientists make an astonishing discovery about their evolution. For hundreds of years, people thought that these guys were really closely related. But when we started using genetic techniques and molecular techniques in the 1990s especially, yeah. we actually found that they're really not closely related at all. So whereas the European moles are more closely related to shrews and hedgehogs, yeah. the golden mole is more closely related to elephants and manatees <laughs> than it is any of those sorts of mammals. And this is a fantastic example of convergent evolution. So these things are really remarkably unrelated. Natural selection has favoured certain aspects, certain shapes of their anatomy, and it just so happens that they look so similar because looking like this means you can do a really good job of digging under the ground. So the challenge of moving through the various environments on land has meant that some skeletons have adapted in very similar ways, even though they have a completely different evolutionary heritage. And the way the skeleton, this extraordinary collection of bones, has adapted to move on land is just one reason I find bones endlessly fascinating.